Hello, this is Brenda Semenoff again. I hope you were rooting for the Denver Broncos because they won today. It is Super Bowl Sunday. And I took the day off, went to church this morning, and decided to do my video blogging this evening. So, as you all know, I do video blog with Empower Network, and I'm having a great time doing it. Um, I hope you all have enjoyed my wine tours. I will be back at it tomorrow. Or in the next day or so. It just depends on uh, how busy my days get. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed the postings that I've put up. I want to take a moment and uh, just say, you know, I have enjoyed it truly doing this. And it's so easy just to sit here with the camera and talk to it. And uh, having a, a good time. I like to get out a little more, and uh, tomorrow though is doctor days, so gotta do those whether you like them or not. And at my age, there's a lot of them sometimes, but anyway, neither here nor there. Um, I want to talk to you about um, old tales from my great grandmother. Um, I had the fortunate. Um, of having her until I was 16 years old. And so when she traveled to Oklahoma from Missouri, it was behind a Conestoga wagon at the age of 10 years old. And I always wondered, you know, silly things, I guess, about where'd you get your water? You know, how, how do you know it was good? What she told me was, was her daddy had silver coins, and they had five water barrels on their Conestoga wagon. And two nights before their trip started, her daddy took five coins and placed them, five coins, at the bottom of each barrel of water. Now, a lot of people may not know this, but silver will purify and kill any bacteria that's in the water. Now, I didn't know that until my great-grandmother told me. The other thing she told me was about Vicks. Now, we've all seen Vicks. You know, there's not a single one of you out there, now, I don't think, that doesn't know what a bottle of Vicks looks like. And I always had colds as I was growing up. Um, it turned out that they were allergies, but I was always congested. And my great-grandmother would take a pot of boiling water and she'd pour it over into a bowl and take a tablespoon of that Vicks and put it in there and let it melt. And then she'd get a towel, the biggest one she could find, and she would make a tent over the bowl and it would clear up my sinuses. Um, and the third thing that she would do is if you had congestion in your chest, she would take and put the Vicks all over your chest. And then she takes take saran wrap and wrap it all around you. And uh, as some of you women know, if you sweat enough and you have the right materials and things, uh, you can sweat some fat off. And But this was <laughs> getting the, the Vicks into the chest. So those are wives' tales, I know. But I know one thing. The wives' tales were there for a reason. They had a purpose, and they had, they were passed down by word of mouth from mother to daughter for generations. Because they worked eucalyptus, get some eucalyptus oil and put in a steamer and let it burn all night and steam in your sinuses. It helps them open up. And you have to wash, wash the moisture down on the windows in the morning. But uh, those old wives' tales, they, they had a purpose. I mean, they didn't have doctors like we do. And uh, they had to keep their family well. One of the most interesting stories of growing up was during the Spanish-American flu. Household after household lost their wage earner. And my great-grandmother told me this one day. She was feeding seven families. And it was just about the time that Red Cross had started up. 
and they came to her door. And the first thing that everybody knew about my great-grandmother is if you came to her door, you came intending to stay for a while, or you didn't come in. So she met the people at the gate and said, are you coming to stay for a while, or are you just coming to chat? And uh, the ladies said to chat, she says, well, I don't have time. They said, well, we just want you to donate to Red Cross. And Grammy says, ladies, if you will donate to these seven families, then I will gladly give you money. She says, but since I'm feeding these seven families every day, um, if you're not going to be willing to help, then I, I think I would ask you to be on your way. And what she did was she would get up at 4.30 in the morning and she would cook. And she would have her special little pails. And she would have Grandpa take them down to each of the families as he went to work. Then at night when he came home from work, Grammy had cauldrons going. And in the cauldron was boric acid and lye soap that she had shaved off. She made her own lye soap. And she had two cauldrons. One were for dishes and one was for clothes. And Grandpa, he'd put all those dishes in those cauldrons. And then Grammy had an outdoor shower. Now you think Hawaii's got something on outdoor showers? My Grammy had them beat long time ago. So anyway, Grandpa would go in and get into the shower, outdoor shower. And Grammy always had his clothes all ready for him. And he had a big old hook. And he would hook those clothes and reach him over into the cauldron and come late evening that as the fire went down then he would go and get them and Grammy would rinse them all out and put the dishes away for the morning rinse them and put them away and then she would rinse and wash his clothes out with all the lye in it and stuff and hang them by the fire and that's how they dried no wash machines you know and things back then she just boiled the heck out of them now, I never ask if they use colored dyes in their clothes because I know my Grammy. And she was pretty... She didn't like a lot of color. Um, they wore dusters. She didn't... Uh, I think she was 81 before she wore a, a pants suit. And she was 81, I know, before she ever flew on a plane. If God had have meant for people to fly, he would have given us wings. But she enjoyed her first flight so much that she went, she would always go every summer from Santa Rosa, California to Oklahoma City. Now that's a very long drive. And she did it all by herself in a 1957 DeSoto, pink and white, with black interior, cloth interior. And uh, she drove that thing until she burnt the engine out. And she broke down in Needles, California. And then she got on a bus and went on to Oklahoma, and her sister put her on the plane. And ever, ever after that, she flew. God gave her wings. She might as well use them. <laughs> so, anyway, God bless and have a great day. I hope that you were rooting for the Broncos and that they won for you, as we know they did. And uh, the reason I blog, I have post-traumatic stress syndrome. It helps get me out of the house. And if you need to make extra money from home or you just need to get out of the house, click on the button below. We can help you make the money. See our income disclosure at EmpowerNetwork.com income. And uh, we're for real. Just, you know, if you enjoy writing, if you have a hobby you enjoy, go for it. Have a great day.